I want to show that, as you notice now, we don't have the instability of it, of it rocking because this surface is a little bit more level than the table was. But because it is on a floor, you know, there's the, the possibility of this sliding around that when you go to stack, initially stack the dog, you do want to put your foot on it to hold it in place while you mount the dog up on there. But once you have the dog up there, you're, it's no problem to step away and step in front of the dog or whatever it is that you need to do with the dog. And obviously, I've put on the larger feet uh, or pads for the bigger dog. All right, so I'm gonna start with Crystal for my adult dog. And if you'll notice on this stacker, I literally have the front to the left side of the spine, and I have my rear to the left side of the spine and hanging over beyond the arm. To show you how stable this, this product is, regardless of the, um, the surface that you have it on or the position that you have it in, you will have stability at all times. Now, when stacking an older dog, obviously you can't just place them on there. So the first thing I want to do is, is get, my, get her to line up a little bit. Wait, I've got to grab my bait. I want to kind of get her to stand to the side of the stacker so I can see if I roughly have it in the correct position. And I'm going to say that probably I do. So if you can, you want to get your dog... Oh. Also, most importantly, I'm on a tile floor, so this can slide around as I'm trying to stack my dog. So as to not create fear, I am going to put my foot on the spine to hold it in place as I stack my dog. But once I remove my foot and she's stacked up on the stacker, I can get in front of her, I can stand beside her, I can get in any position and the stability will remain there. And and I don't have to worry about it sliding around at that point. So you want to get your dog to straddle over the, the stacker. And in some cases, you may have to kind of help place them. And you want to get the front feet as close to the stacker as possible. Actually, I, I shouldn't stack her over, have her straddle over the middle because I didn't set it to the middle. But have their feet as close to the front arms as possible so that when you're placing the foot on there, they're not apt to slide forward. Their, their body's already there in position. So I'm going to place her foot up. Place up her other foot. And notice that as she's putting the weight, her body weight pressing forward, the stability of the stacker remains there and there is no toppling over. Then I'm going to place her rear foot. Crystal hasn't been on the stacker before, so this is new to her. Place her other rear foot, and again, all this weight I'm shifting, there is no toppling over. All right, so now I have her on the stacker. I'm going to reposition her feet. Kind of put your hand under their jaw. That helps support them, bring them forward. I'm going to reposition her back feet. See if that's where I want her. Also, whenever stacking a dog, when possible, it is best to do it in front of a mirror or a glass door so that you can see if you have the dog in a correct stack. And the truth is, I have her front legs too far forward, so I would want to take her off and reposition the, the front arm back, I'm going to say two or three holes. So just simply place the fat foot back down behind the stacker, and then walk her off the back. and reposition the stacker, the, the front arm, and repeat. <laughs> and 
and again, let me remind you that I have both of the front legs positioned to the left side of the spine, not over the spine. And this one here is extended beyond the arm. And yet, no toppling. I still have the stability required to comfortably teach a dog or puppy to stack. And I can actually still go back a little bit on the front. But here I am, my foot is now off of the spine. Oh, and actually these should be together a little bit more. But for the sake of the video, I won't get her perfect because we're here showcasing not my dog, but the stacker. Here I can stand in front of her and bait her. I can stand beside her. My foot is no longer on the spine. Oops. And even with her body shifting, Even with her body shifting, which I'm purposely shifting it, there is no toppling over. All right, so Max is a bit bigger. So actually, where I have this set should probably work for him better than it did Crystal. And he's kind of a doofus, he's a boy. And as you can see, he's not been on the stacker. He's not sure what I'm doing but he is straddling pretty much the way I want him. So I'm gonna get his front feet a little bit closer, holding my hands underneath his chin and supporting his body. I'm gonna lift up that first leg. Stay. <laughs> At the elbow, there you go. Switching hands, I'm gonna grab the right leg. Raising his foot. Bringing up his other foot. Okay, he's trying to lean into me, that's fine. Now I'm gonna readjust that leg. All right, so I'm gonna, again, once he's up, holding up his neck, I'm going to put those front feet where I want them. Well, it's pretty pink leash. Front feet where I want them. I'm going to reset that back leg. Reset that leg. Now keep in mind he's leaning into me. He's not sure about this. This is mostly to show you the stability. Oh, and I can take my foot off even though he's kind of pulling on me right now. I can get in front of him. Try and get him up over himself. He says, Mom, I'm not doing anything to do with that cheese because I don't like where you've put me. There we go. Good boy. And even though he's moving and nibbling on the cheese, it's not moving around, you have stability and adjustability. And Max is about... 75, 80 pounds, he's very big boned. So again, I'm, I'm confident that it would hold a 100 pound, pound dog. And as you can see, I still have room where I could adjust about three or four more holes to, to get more length if I had a bigger dog. And I could definitely go much wider uh, on the arms. 